Hey guys, Jules from Rode here. Now, as you already know, the Rodecaster Pro is an amazing piece of gear for anyone wanting to record a podcast, and we've managed to add improvements time and time again by linking up with you, the community, and listening to your feedback and suggestions. So we want to take a second to thank you, the community, for keeping the dialogue open as you're helping to create something very, very, very special. Now, this community update will be a first for Rode microphones as we've never done anything like this before. And we've actually got Nick in the house, our social media manager. Hey, Nick, how's it going? Good. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, for anyone watching along at home, if you've got any questions, post them in the comments and we'll get back to you a bit later on in the stream. Cool. RCP questions. Load them. Uh, on top of this, we'll not only be able to download the latest beta version of the software that we show you today, but we'll be looking to get your feedback after you've downloaded it and tested it and worked around with it as well. So keep posted for that. Without further ado, we are super excited to give you the first glimpse at a new firmware update for the Rodecaster Pro version 2.1.0. Now we need to mention that the version that you're about to see is still in development, so depending on your feedback and suggestions, it could still change. Now, one of the biggest bits of feedback that we heard from the community was that you would love to be able to have more control over the effects in the Rodecaster Pro. Now, this has inspired us to create the Advanced Effects Editor. Now, the way that you actually find that is by jumping into Settings here, go to Hardware, we want to go to Advanced, into Extra, and up here, enable effects editor mode. We'll just click that. And now that that is active, you can probably hear some of the effects are now in my voice. So if I jump back to the home and we'll go into the setting for the first channel there and click effects, we have all of the options for all of the new effects that have been uh, loaded up onto the Rodecaster Pro. So you can jump into any of these effects and change all the parameters. The first one that we're gonna jump into and the first one that you may have noticed here is the reverb. And this is the first time we've added this, obviously, into the Rodecaster Pro. And this is available with all available parameters with the Advanced Effects Editor. So if we jump into that now, you can see all of the different uh, types of settings that we can change. If we enable that, you can probably hear that on my voice now. I'm in a huge, massive pipe. So we've got anything from medium to small to large. You can, of course, change the levels, how much of your dry signal is being sent to that reverb. I'm just going to turn it down because it's a little bit confusing there. You can change the damping if you've got too much of the high frequency stuff pinging around the room. So I'll just turn that off and we'll jump into the next uh, uh, effect that we can change. So the next up is the high pass filter. And if we click that, all it is is basically changing the, the starting uh, frequency at which that becomes active. So this is really helpful if you're getting rid of uh, air, air, air con noise or maybe rumble outside with traffic. Um, some of these things are very common in rooms, so you might want to really hone in on the right frequency that you want, might want that to start at. So that's a very, very handy thing that you can have there. The next one here is, of course, the Aphex Aural Exciter and Big Bottom. Now, I'm going to apply this to my voice. It's currently active at the moment, so you can hear the nice harmonic distortion happening on my, my higher end with the Aural, aural Exciter. You can change the mix. You can have more if you want or a little bit less. We can turn that up and down. You can hear that in my voice at the moment. The big bottom is very nice for adding a little bit more body into my voice. You can hear that coming through in the recording now. Of course, you can use the bypass little switch up here to enable or disable that effect really quickly and easy. So really nice addition there to really hone in on the, on the right amount of, uh, of, of spice that you want to add to your recordings and podcasts. The next one up is the de -esser. As you can hear, I probably want to be applying a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. You can hear the the S's in my voices. We can change the threshold and you can hear that starting to come through now with the S's. Not only that, you can actually change the ratio, the attack, the release, all types of things. But if you swipe across, you can see we've got multiple uh, different pages to this as well. So you can change the gain of that and the frequency at which this t uh, starts in particular, which is very handy if you really know someone's voice and you know exactly what frequency you want to be starting that uh, de at as well. So very handy feature there. Now, if we jump into the noise gate, you can probably hear that working on my voice right now. If I turn that off, you can hear the room tone that we've got in this, this room right now. And turn that on, we can really get and dial in the, the right amount of uh, a threshold that we want to be pushing that. And also the range as well is a very nice little setting. Now, I'm not going to jump into 
I'm not going to jump into any of the settings as to how a noise gate works at this point. Uh, you, can, you can have a look at that later on uh, on YouTube or wherever you want to get your information. But knowing that you have all of these granular controls for this particular effect is really, really helpful. So hopefully you really enjoy that. The next up, of course, and certainly not least, is the compressor. Now, you can change anything from the ratio, the attack, the release, uh, the gain. You can see this real-time graph here is actually very impressive in showing you exactly how much compression is pulling down uh, out of your voice. Now, if I change the threshold slightly, you can really hear that compression coming through super, super strong. So you can back it off a fair bit. And of course, you can bypass or turn that on if you want, just to really help you with um, really help you with uh, getting that right uh, amount of compression in your recordings, which is very important to most people who are podcasting, of course. Now, if we pull back into the effects menu, you can see the combination of all of these granular effects controls is super, super powerful. And as you can imagine, the soundies out there are really going to appreciate this. As the Rodecaster Pro essentially becomes a fully featured mixing console, you could literally record a band on this thing or four singers, anything you really want to get a really nice uh, sounding podcast or recording out of, out of the uh, Rodecaster Pro. But this actually brings me to the next feature, which is really handy in knowing exactly what your meters are showing you. Now, we've added a setting to enable DBFS markers on the meters in the home screen. And the way that you get to that, jumping into settings, hardware, we're gonna go to advanced and the same area, extras. And enable console meters mode. When you switch that on, and we'll go back to the home screen, you can now see it is displaying all of our individual uh, levels for each track, which is really nice when you're trying to get uh, the right gain level for your, for your podcast. So if someone's very loud, all you have to do is make sure you watch the levels here and you can really hone in on exactly what you want, which is about minus 10, minus 5 dB for these things. So you can see that at my loudest, I'm sticking up around minus 15, which is quite comfortable for us here. So really nice to be able to get that information from the Rodecaster Pro on the home screen. Now, one of the other big things that we were hearing from the community was that you would love to be able to overdub sounds in the sound bank record mode. And this inspired us to create an overdub mode that enables you to layer sounds on the same sound pad. Uh, the way that we jump into that is by using the new uh, sound pad button on the front there. We just click that. We can see uh, the usual banks with our, with our sound pads here. What I might do just for the, in the interest of showing you this, I'm going to delete this first one. So we'll clear that. And what we want to do is record onto that channel. I'm recording a sting from a podcast. Now, if we use the overdub button, sorry about missing, we can click that and record a second overdub on top of the original one. So we'll hit record here. I'm, I'm recording, recording a sting from a podcast. podcast. Again, I have to apologize for my horrible singing. But if we save that and we play that back, let's just jump back to the settings. Recording a sting from a podcast. Really terrible, I know, but just shows you exactly the, the really powerful tools that you can have in terms of overdubbing onto the sound pads, which is really cool. So we've just done that in a matter of five seconds, but it enables you to get super creative as well. So you can record transitions right here on the Rodecaster Pro. But of course, what you could also do is uh, maybe record like music onto the sound pad and layer on top of that, maybe a uh, voiceover. And that could really help to up the production of your podcast as well. So nice. Anyway, another piece of feedback that we heard regularly was that you would like to have your multi-track recordings to be recorded with all of your fader positionings and the FX included. Previously, all multi-track recordings were recorded unaffected by your fader positioning effects. So it acted kind of like a backup. So you could go back and edit your podcast with a clean recording if you needed to. Well, thanks to your feedback, we've introduced the option to record your podcast post fader. Now, if I'm going to show you that there, I'll jump back to the home menu. I'll go into settings, hardware, advanced. We'll go to multi-track. And here you can see that multi-track recording is done post fader. So everything that I'm doing here, all of the uh, beautiful effects that I've arranged on my voice with the advanced uh, effects editor has now been baked into the recording that I'm recording into GarageBand or whatever DAW I'm recording there, or of course onto our micro SD card. 
Now, don't forget, you can still record pre-fader if you want to ensure you have a recording unaffected by fader positioning and effects. But this new option is great if you're super confident in your mixing ability, and if you are, kudos to you. Aside from all these technical changes, we've introduced a few measures to ensure that the user experience is a bit more elegant. And this includes the new micro SD icon on the homepage. Now, if I click on that micro SD icon on the front homepage there, you can see that it brings us to the options uh, really quickly, especially if you want to format things or put it into podcast transfer mode, which is really nice. We've also introduced a feature where if you swipe up or down, depending on what you do, it will take you in and out of different menus. So from here, if we swipe up, it will take us to the home screen menu. And the same for down, if you go down, it will take you back to the previous menu that you were sitting on before. So this is awesome. If you're hop around, hopping around for different settings and screens, and you really want to jump back and, and forth between the two really quickly without mucking around with the uh, menus too much. So up until now, we've been talking about hardware, 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 but there is a whole different side to the Rodecaster Pro that we've been busy working on. And of course, I'm talking about the companion app and there are some really exciting new additions. The new effects parameters that are now also on the Rodecaster Pro are also controllable from the advanced effects editor window in the companion app. Now, as I jump into the settings here, if I go file and I'll go to open effects editor, you can see all of this is in real time, which is awesome. So any changes that you make within this companion app that will be reflected on your Rodecaster Pro and vice versa. So looking through, you have the option for individual channels. So channel one, uh, you have the compressor also in real time. What we just saw before is a master compressor for the entire podcast. So changing the threshold here is kind of like a nice way of uh, mastering out something. Well, not mastering, but applying a little bit of gentle compression to, your, to the entirety of your uh, podcast. But also all of the individual effects that we were going through before are also present here. So the noise gate, the DSR, the AFX. And as I said before, all of these changes will be ref reflected with your Rodecaster Pro in real time. So amazing integration of software and hardware there. So on top of this, we also introduced a new setting that allows 64-bit WAV support. Uh, to do this, you just go to File, we'll go down to Advanced and then save 64-bit podcasts. So we've already got it selected at this point, but with this setting switched on, you can now record podcasts as long as you want. And it won't be separated to accommodate the usual four gigabytes file size restrictions. So you'll simply have one long WAV file that you won't need to stitch together in post-production. Really, really handy if you want to push something out really quickly uh, that you've recorded as a podcast, which is, which is really nice. So something that we found a lot of podcasters were struggling with was delivering a podcast that is ready for uploading to Spotify or Apple. And for this reason, we did a lot of work making the exporting process a bit more flexible. So now you have the option to use loudness correction on your podcast with a few different options, depending on where you are planning on uploading it. We also introduced an MP3 encoding and formatting service that will give the option to export whatever type of bit depth or sample rate that you're looking for. Now, I'm going to show you exactly where that is here. What you need to do first, though, is switch your podcast into podcast transfer mode. So we'll hit yes. And as you can see on my laptop, it's come up with the podcast in this section here. So this is one that we recorded earlier today, the very short one, only two seconds. If I click on that, you can see the different transfer options that I was talking about before. So we've got WAV and we've also got MP3. Now, MP3, you can select between whatever bit rate you want. Your sample rates can be different if you really would like them to be. Uh, we've also got these loudness presets as well. And that might be very helpful if you know that you're going to be uploading this to maybe iTunes, Spotify, or BBC, because they have very different loudness standards. So let's select Spotify here for the moment. Now, if we want to, we could go across to WAV, and we do have 32-bit WAV or RF64 which is a very specific uh, European Broadcasting Union um, uh, requirement if you're going to upload there. Uh, if you don't live in Europe, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, loudness presets, Spotify, iTunes, or BBC, just like, just like before. So the loudness presets applies both to WAV and MP3 as well. Now, not only this, uh, people who appreciate a bit more space on their desktop background, you also have the option to jump in here to file small window mode. 
As you can see, you have a little bit more of the real estate of your screen and it's been put into a smaller discrete package, which is nice. Now, we are so excited about these changes and we are really looking forward to you all taking them and testing them out. And this, of course, brings me to the whole point of today's video. We are asking you to download the beta version of this firmware update. Have a play and let us know what you love, what you'd like to change, maybe the potential you see it, uh, maybe the ideas you have for future updates. We want to hear it all. And that download can be found in the download section at roadcaster.com. Uh, if you can't find it, just follow the prompts there. And once you do have a bit of feedback for us on this uh, firmware update, let us know via email on info at road.com. But aside from that, get your questions in and we'll do our best to answer them all. Okay, Nick, do we have uh, any questions ready for, for now? Yeah, thanks, Jules. We've had a, a lot of really excited comments uh, in the comments section. Um, we had Aaron saying, I think it's really great that you guys keep developing on this, which is uh, really good feedback. Uh, we also had Jake Barros. He said, you guys are honestly nailing these updates. So a lot of really excited people yeah, in the comments. Great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's great to hear. Um, we also did have a few questions. We had one from Mark. Um, he asked if you can fire off other pads whilst you're in the overdub mode. Uh, good question. Yes, you can. The short answer. I'm actually going to show you here the way that you can actually do it. So if we go to sound, let's delete the terrible singing that I did earlier. We'll clear that one. So if I hit record and I hit any of these pads and we'll stop there. Let's overdub again. Chord and I hit any of these pads and we'll Great. So you can probably hear the part of my uh, talking because it takes the main stereo mix output and it records pretty much everything to that sound pad. So while in record mode for your pads, uh, even if it's in overdub mode, you can use all of your other pads to trigger off those sounds. And the thing that we've come up with, our masterpiece that we've just created there, let's have a listen. Chord. <laughs> and a hit. Any of these pads. And we'll Beautiful, an absolute masterpiece. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Cool, great. Um, we had another question just on the on the sound pads. Lawrence was asking if there were any way to trim the sounds recorded on the pads. No, you can't trim the sounds recorded on the pads, but you can, what you can do, if I jump back into that sound pads menu there, so we'll select that. Uh, when you hit overdub, you can actually scrub to the point at which you want to start recording or overdubbing on top of that particular sound pad. So the short answer is no, but you can do this, but that may be a feature that we end up adding to the Rodecaster Pro. So thanks for the feedback. That's actually very, very valuable. <laughs> Great. Um, just on the actual download, um, we had a question from Stan. Uh, sorry, from Sam. He asked when the beta download would be available. Yes, the beta download is actually available right now. If you jump onto the website in the download section uh, for the Roadcaster Pro, you can download it now, try it out, play it around with it. Everything you've just seen here, you'll have full access to. So really excited to see what you guys think about that. Just as a follow up, if you guys had any um if you guys wanted to give any feedback, just feel free to comment on our socials uh, at Road Mike or at Road Mike's on Twitter. Also, send an email to info at road.com. That's, uh, that's the best way to get in contact up with us. Awesome. Um, another question. Uh, we had Callie. She asked if you can go back to previous versions of the firmware. Yes, you can go back to a previous version of the software. In fact, we recommend it if you're going to be working on anything that's uh, sensitive. So if you're working on your podcast uh, for your work, for example, you might want to revert back to the original, uh, the, the stable version that we are currently running at the moment. Because this new beta version is a beta version for a reason. Uh, we haven't tested all the bugs, which is why we're getting you to do it. So if you wanted to download the previous version, just jump onto the same downloads page on the Roadcaster Pro website. And there is a run through, a bit of a walkthrough on how to get that done and uh, load it up onto your Roadcaster Pro. Yeah, cool. Um, just while we are on the uh, on the download again, uh, does it work on Catalina and Microsoft 10? Yes, we've tested this uh, time and time again, and it's very, very, very stable on Catalina. You can run it on Windows 10 as well. So good news is that both of those uh, types of operating systems are very stable and working very well. Uh, that said, if you again, if you really wanted to use the older version, you can just uh, jump on the website and you can uh, and you can download that there. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Jules. Um, we got a few, I've got a few other questions. That, um, I, was, I was wondering, what's the order the processing is done on the mic channels? 
Yes, awesome question, Nick. Let's jump into the settings here just so I can get my bearings. So the way that we do the processing is uh, high pass filter first. So uh, subtractive EQ, we go to noise gate second. Third, we go to the de and then to the compressor. Then we run that into the Aphex, Oral Exciter and the big bottom. And then finally, last but not least, we have the reverb as well. So that is the signal flow order and it will be consistent like that uh, across every single channel. Great, we've had a few more um, really positive comments coming through. Uh, Constant just co uh, commented saying, nice hardware combines four of my current devices. So hey. really, really cool feedback. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. Um, we have had quite a few questions. They're all wondering how long the beta testing is going to be go uh, going for. Do you know the answer to that, Jules? Um, we're going to be running the beta testing for as long as it takes, really, um, to get the, the right feedback and the right, uh, uh, you know, ideas from you guys. It really depends on uh, what your feedback is and, and if we can implement it. So stay tuned for this, uh, for this space, but it is probably going to be about three to four weeks. We can say that now. Yeah, cool. Um, I had a question just on the um, changing the settings uh, of the effects in the app. Does it change? Um on the unit in real time when you change in the app on your computer? Yes, yes, it does. So real time changes within the uh, advanced audio effects editor within the, um, the the software will also be reflected on your Rodecaster Pro and the same vice versa. So if you change anything on the Rodecaster Pro in terms of effects, it will be reflected in real time in your uh, software. So really nice combination of the firmware and the software working together seamlessly. Cool. Um, Finn just asked, will this show be accessible as a video on your website or YouTube later on? Hey, Finn, yes, it is going to be available on YouTube. So if you wanted to go back and check out this video for whatever reason, have a listen to the effects and get some ideas for your own podcasts, it will be available on the, uh, on the YouTubes. <laughs> um, yeah, really cool. Uh, we had a question come in from Dylan. So he says he uses the Roadcaster to host multiple podcasts for different clients. He was wondering if there's any way they could switch between profiles where the pads are programmed for different podcasts. So one set of pads is programmed for one podcast and then, okay, so what you can do within the companion app, you have the option to save shows. So it's kind of like a, almost like a snapshot of your Rodecaster Pro, uh, if you will. So if we jump into the settings here and go file, uh, and we go save show, that will effectively save a snapshot of the Rodecaster Pro as a backup if you ever wanted to load it onto another Rodecaster Pro. So you're never going to be stuck with someone else's settings and, and you're freaking out because it's all over the place. You can always come back to uh, a safe space, if you will, if you have saved your uh, Rodecaster Pro uh, initially. Cool. Um, some more good comments coming in from Michael. He said he's currently using the Roadcaster in his home studio while during uh, while doing uh, home isolation. Enables hey, me hey. to continue doing live shows on our community radio station. Cheers, guys. Hey, cheers. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Um, one more, uh, another question I had. Um, can you go back to previous versions of the firmware? Uh, yes, yes. So we mentioned before you can jump onto the website, and so you can uh, jump onto the website, and what that. Um, what you need to do is jump onto the download section, sorry, of the Rodecaster Pro website, and uh, you can revert back to an older version. There is, again, as we're talking about a walkthrough on how to get that done. So you just hold, I think it's Control or Alt, and you go through the settings. There is a whole walkthrough of talking through how to do that. So if you're really freaking out about committing to a beta version of the software, don't worry, you can revert back to the old one very easily. Cool. Um, we've had a, a few questions just on um, the sound effects pads. So what are all the different options you can have when you press the sound effects pad? Because I know you can, you can lock it, you can loop it. What, what are the other options you got there? Yes, that's a very good question. So if we jump back to hang on, sound pads, we'll select my masterpiece that I created before. So latch, uh, latch is going to, hang on, let me see. So if we, I might actually just go through and literally play all the sounds. So it has to do with how the sounds are fired off uh, at any particular time. So if we've got a nice short one here, sad trombone. So play means it will just play through its whole entirety. Replay. We'll replay the sound. 
pause means that whenever you hit the pad and it's through it's during a, a play, you can actually pause it. Oh wait, we're not on the right one. Hang on a second. Let me just change that. That's right. Chord. Oh, no, we're on the wrong one. And a hit. Oh. Hang on. I'm just getting myself my bearings here. Let me just jump back into the correct one. Sad trombone. Okay. Play. We'll just let it play through all the way. If we go pause, we talked about replay. Pause. Whenever you hit the pad again, it will pause at that particular time. And then, and you can play it back later. Latch will enable it to you to latch it as well. So what we might do is we'll get back to you very quickly about uh, that in particular. And we'll, we'll let you know what that uh, particular setting does uh, in a second. So we'll just uh, stay tuned for that one. Cool. Um, I've had a lot of uh, people just ask, just f uh, for general podcasting help, so help on how to upload to uh, uh, hosting platforms like Spotify, um, Acast, Anchor, all that kind of thing. If you guys have any podcasting questions at all like that, just uh, email info at road.com. We'll be happy to answer any of your podcasting questions just to, um, to help you guys out with getting your podcast started. Um, I think that's all we have time for today though, Jules. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, we've got uh, sadly, we, we do have to finish up this this presentation, even though it's been really nice for you guys to tr tune in and have a listen and have a really nice sneak peek at the new firmware of this uh, of the Rodecaster Pro. Uh, hopefully you guys are as excited as we are about the Rodecaster Pro. But we are actually offering prizes uh, by if you were to download the, the, the beta version of the software. We're actually offering prizes, so keep an eye out for that for more announcements on that particular topic. Uh, but I also want to take a second to uh, announce that we are going to be coming back in 2020 with my roadcast uh, after a very successful year in 2019. So also stay tuned for that. You might want to get your entries in uh, fairly, fairly soon. So without further ado, thanks for tuning everybody. Happy podcasting and stay safe out there. And uh, we'll see you uh, later on.